Tonight we're at the Wayne County Public Library where historian Marty Cheddar of the Public Library will be presenting a program about baseball. Baseball is very important here in Wayne County. We've had several major players go into the sport from right here in Wayne County. Tonight we're going to see artifacts, we're going to hear people talking, we're going to just have a good old time talking about baseball, the American pastime. Um, and this is a, a jersey, a Wayne jersey that Jerry wore uh, when he was with California Angels in the mid-80s. Um, and then also, this is the first, his first major league hit. This is the ball. He let us borrow, which is pretty cool. So uh, definitely come in and take a look at it. Uh, thank you, Marty, for uh, organizing this and having this. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, is anyone here that played baseball with Jerry Nair? Any family member of Jerry Nair? Does anyone here know Jerry Nair? <laughs> so we do have that. Uh, I'd like to tell you that it is a pleasure for me to be up here tonight. Um, I would much more be happier if I was probably in the batter's box and it'd be the ninth inning. A man on third base, the game tied, and George Whitfield giving me the squeeze bunt signal. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that I had to bunt it in order for us to win the ball game because I would be probably a little more relaxed. Uh, I am so proud to be able to be here and represent Jerry, uh, who's obviously now, he's managing, and they have a game tonight, I think, started at, at 6.30. It's a special honor for me. Uh, Jerry signed right out of high school. Uh, the first game he played in, was in that summer was uh, in Johnson City, Tennessee, and what a great thing with that was he played with his brother Johnny Nair. They both played in that first year and played together. Uh, when he came back in the summer after baseball season was over, East Carolina was on the quarter system. So since they were on the quarter system, he was able to go to school for two quarters and then he would go back to play baseball. So Jerry got two years of schooling in in the summertime when he first started uh, in the pros uh, by being able to do that. He roomed with two local boys here. Uh, one was Berkey Perkins, some of you may know him, and the other was Stuart Bray. And he, they allowed him to room with him. I'm not sure if Jerry even paid. He just went and stayed with them while he went just mm -hmm. to two quarters. Jerry played eight seasons in the major leagues from 1974 to 1982. He was with the Yankees. And then from 82 to 89, he was with uh, Seattle and California. He got his first single hit of Hall of Famer Jim Palmer on April 19, 1979 against Baltimore. And his first major league home run was a solo shot of Hall of Famer Dennis Ekin. Eckersley on September 1, 1979. He was a starting catcher on August the 3rd, 1979. That was a very special weekend of games. It was a night before Thurman Munson, who was at that time the captain of the New York Yankees, as well as the starting catcher and been they had been there several years. <coughs> they pulled Jerry up to catch. Thurman, on a quick story, he had got interested in flying. I uh, bought him an airplane. So that weekend they gave him off and he was going to fly his plane. They had Jerry catching for him. Gary caught Jerry caught the night before. And then the next day Thurman had a plane wreck and was killed. Well, the season had to go on. It was very emotional. The next game Jerry had to catch. And this was after the death of Thurman. 
They had a time of silence, which was supposed to be about two minutes. And then Jerry read, I wrote in a statement that Jerry read, for about nine to ten minutes, there was an ovation for Thurman. And in that particular game, as they do now, they all lined up, the one team on the first base side, one team on the third base side, and they have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Well, that particular game, as they lined up, the slot where Thurman stood was vacant in honor of him. And Jerry stayed in the dugout. Well, Jerry went on to catch that game and caught, uh, I think it was 69 more that year for the Yankees. Uh, Jerry was manager of the Baltimore Orioles farm system from 89 to 92. He was hired as coach for the Orioles by skipper Johnny Oates. After two seasons in Baltimore, he moved with uh, Oates to Texas Rangers. Jerry was his third base coach for the Rangers from 95 until he was named the interim coach for the team during the 2002 campaign. Nairn served as bench coach for the Boston Red Sox during their 203 run for the series and performed the same role for Cincinnati in 2004 and 2005. Jerry was named as a Red Interim Manager on June 20, 2005, and on September 29th of that year, his contract was extended to cover the 2006 season with a mutual option for 2007. The next year, after 35 years in baseball, Jerry came home. It was his first time home during baseball season. It was his son, Connor's senior year at Charles B. Acock. So Jerry, also during that year, was named at, uh, to the front office as a consultant with the Texas Rangers, but they allowed him to come home and work with his son and their team. And I'm sure that was a special honor and a special feeling that Jerry had to be able to do that. Sam was his first time on. Uh, I think Jerry's family, they were five girls, four girls, and one boy. And Connor was the only son, and he was the baby. Now he was named to the Red Center manager, I think I just told you. And pardon me for having to read. There's been about 40 years during this time I was in high school coaching and right now, and I promise you, I cannot remember it all. Uh, I had the privilege of coaching Jerry for three years at Goldsboro High School. He was the only sophomore that ever played for me when I was coaching. He had an awful lot of ability. He didn't have a real strong arm as a sophomore. And when we, he first started that year, we had a point between home plate and second base and instead of trying to throw it all the way to second to throw the guy out, we'd have him throw to that spot on the ground and let it bounce into second base. And that's how he started. Uh, that was a special year also for me as well as Jerry because Johnny, who played first base for me, was Jerry's brother, and he was a senior year that year. So Jerry and Johnny both got to play. I told you previously they got to play their first year in the pros together in the minor leagues, and then they... <clears throat> In high school, they got to play the last year for Johnny and the first year for Jerry. When he put on his cap, cleats, and mitt, he was 110% athlete, baseball player. Jerry was had a split personality, I guess you may say. Off the field, he was large in stature, as you can see his figure over there. He was very quiet, had a soft demeanor. On the field, he was a total different person. He was very aggressive, hard-nosed, and played to the last strike. He was a fierce competitor. I think he was a lot like his daddy in a way. His daddy was big in statue, but quiet in voice. But when he spoke, you listened. So Jerry inherited that from his family. Jerry grew up in Goldsboro with a family. His dad, John Naren, 
who was owner of a furniture store, Vivian Naren. His mother was a math teacher at Southern Wayne High School until retirement. Their family were strong members of Madison Avenue Baptist Church. Uh, I so happened at that time to be a member there. Jerry, as a young boy there, was very active in the church and also in Boy Scouts. He was also very respectful and polite. And as I said before, his, his family consisted of his mother and daddy and family. It was three girls and two boys, Jerry and Johnny. His parents were very supportive of them. They were a true Christian family. As Jerry was growing up in Goldsboro, he played at the boys club. He played football, baseball, and basketball. And one of the boys I mentioned earlier, who's a, who's a man now, Stuart Gray, played with him on the Goldsboro Kiwanis boys club team. He said everybody was always happy if they got on base and Jerry came to bat because they knew Jerry would knock them in because that's the kind of player he was. In high school, Jerry was a dedicated Christian athlete starting in football as well as baseball. At that time, I was assistant football coach to Gerald Wisenot, and then during baseball, we switched roles, and he was my assistant. I had a little problem during football because Jerry was the kind of kid because his love for baseball that every weekend he would come to me and say, Coach, can I have the key to the pitching machine so I can go get baseball? Well, that presented a problem to me, number one, because I knew how head coaches were, and I was involved in football, and Jerry was a starter on the football team. And if Jerry had gone out in, during football hitting baseball and he got hurt, then it would have been very tough for me. Fortunately, Jerry can handle many things at the same time, especially when one of them was baseball. So, obviously, I let him go out. He probably wore out 10 dozen baseballs with that pitching machine. Had to buy extra balls just for him so he could hit. As good a man as Jerry is as a human, recently I was told a story that just happened about two weeks ago maybe three weeks. They had a baseball game and uh, two of Jerry's players got thrown out at third base. I'm sorry. One of Jerry's players and one of the other team's players got in an argument. They both got thrown out. Well, Jerry, being the head bench coach for the Brewers now, he immediately goes out and looks the up in the face and says, you threw out the wrong man. And the young up said, yes, sir. And now you're out of the game. <laughs> so he threw Jerry out as well, but Jerry still has that baseball demeanor, as I was saying. When he's on the, fo on the field, it's a total different game. Baseball has not just been a game for Jerry. It has been a long life dream and a year-round job. I believe the season consists of 162 regular season games. Each game may take three or four hours to play, and then the players have to get there four or five hours ahead of the ball game to prepare, and that doesn't take into account the travel time. I've been glad to say that Jerry's been blessed to live his dream, starting as a young boy and still living it now. I'm not going to go through all of Jerry's statistics because you can read those and you can read them on the board. But here's a man, like I say, he's been in baseball seriously since 1941. Oh, God. Since 1971. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of my age. 1971. I still think I'm a child. He started in 1971 as a sophomore. He's still in it, the game right now as a coach. That's 43 years. So it's been a long time. And again, the main thing that I can say about Jerry is he's a Christian young man. 
most players look up to their coaches. I can tell you he's the kind of young man that I looked up to. And one thing that I'm proud to say, he has been affiliated with so many different teams, so many players, and I'm sure he's been a father figure to many players and many young men. I used to tell my players in high school, I said, I all know, I always know that you've got professional people and older people that you look up to. But just remember, I don't care how old you are, there's somebody that's smaller that's looking up to you. So always set that example. And I can honestly say that I can believe Jerry Naren has set, set that example all of his life that I've known him. And I would have to say probably there wouldn't be a parent out here that wouldn't be proud to have him as their son. Thank you very much. I forgot, but I'd like to, and I'll read it to you because somebody had forgotten. Jerry's talent and love of baseball came from great genetics. Nine there men played professional baseball. There were three uncles, Jerry's dad, John, his brother, Johnny, his cousin, Rooster Naren, and his son, Sam, and Jerry's son.